Let's start at the beginning of the Rossignol story. In 1907, a French carpenter named Abel Rossignol set up a small factory that made wooden parts for the textile industry. He had no way of knowing then that the world's leading ski brand would bear his name. In those days, skis were only used by the military. Abel Rossignol worked with them and supplied them with solid wood skis. He based his work on Norwegian models and even went to Norway to study their production methods. The secret? These solid ash planks. Ash was the best material to use since its elasticity made for flexible tips. Wood was a raw material that was cheap and plentiful in the region, so it's no wonder that a carpenter with his intimate knowledge of woodworking became the first ski maker in France. Racers were equipped with Rossignol skis in the first competitions, which took place in Mont Genevra and Chamonix in 1908. These models, which were surprisingly ahead of their time, went on to win the Touring Club of France's Manufacturing Award in 1909. This was the first in a long line of first prizes, later awarded on World Cup and Olympic podiums. Abel Rossignol, who was a brilliant inventor, drew on a well-known woodworking technique to develop laminated skis, splitting a wooden plank lengthwise into four strips and bonding them back together two by two to make a pair of skis that maintain their shape. These became the legendary Olympic 41 after he patented them in 1939. With the Olympic 41, the factory in Voiron increased its production from a few hundred pairs in 1939 to several thousand pairs ten years later. These skis would be used by the majority of amateur skiers, as well as champions like Henri Aurier, the first French Olympic downhill champion in 1948 in Saint Moritz. As early as 1936, Émile Allais formed a partnership with Abel Rossignol for the very first sponsorship deal between a brand and a racer. This collaboration chiefly involved Allais closely supervising the making of his skis by the woodworkers of the Voiron workshop. It was on these skis that he won the bronze medal at the Olympics in Garmisch in 1936 and the world champion title in Chamonix in 1937. Voilà these are my skis with which I won the world championships. You'll see, they are just marvelous. Look, they're real gems. Just look at this flexibility. It's incredible. These skis were made by hand. I gave instruction to a woodworker to remove a bit more wood to make them more flexible. We worked on them with so much precision. Look how lovely they are. Look at this flexibility. Incredible. I'm still in love with these skis. Don't you think they're beautiful? In 1956, there were the first signs of trouble. The textile industry was in crisis, and it was the Rossignol company's core business. Ski production only made up one branch of the company. So Émile Allais brought in the young owner of the Courchevel ski lift, Laurent Boisvive. At Courchevel, I met Mr. Bois, still a young man. He and I revived Rossignol, which was in financial difficulty at the time. He got to work right away. He said, I'm going to find some partners and we're going to put this house back together. 
During the 1950s, I was in Courchevel. I was taking part in the development of the ski resort, and Emile Allais said to me, Laurent, I have a problem in Voiron regarding Rossignol skis. Can you come see what's going on? I went, I looked at the accounts, and I came across a file on metal skis, the metal S, and I quickly saw in it the potential to build something solid that would help develop this company. All at once, we started building and developed the product. And what happened? They became the ski sensation, Allais 60. They suddenly started winning all the world downhill races, including the most important of all in 1960, the Olympic Games in Squaw Valley. And with whom? Jean Vernet, a French skier, and with whom? A French manufacturer. It was a phenomenal success. A small dots come into view, it's Jean heading fast to the finish. The handful of French spectators here are applauding. Jean's coming, he's crossed the finish line. Honoré Bonnet hits the stopwatch and he reads the best time. And Jean Vernet stepped onto the podium, the first French Olympic champion since Henri Aurier in 1948. So here's another surprise. I think you'll recognize it. The LA 60, the company went international with these. It was an extraordinary adventure. All the big champions used it, like uh, Gorchel in 1964. I remember we couldn't make enough of them. Everybody wanted them. That's right, the factory was too small, too small, unfortunately. But it grew, it really grew. The demand grew to such an extent that I wasn't industrially ready to fully meet it. But it taught me what a manufacturer who can plan the future should do. Prepare production when we have a hunch that demand will rise. Building on their success, in 1966, Rossignol's technicians developed the revolutionary plastic skis, on which French skiers won 16 medals at the World Championships in Portillo. The skis that made us number one worldwide, the skis on which Jean-Claude won the professional world championships, as well as Nancy Green, Jean-Claude Kelly, but not as an Olympic champion on our skis. He was wearing the competition. That was the Strato. To us, the Strato is legendary. It brought the group's production to more than one million pairs, which had never happened before in the history of ski anywhere in the world. Laurent Boisvive surrounded himself with loyal and capable people who would spend their entire careers at Rossignol. Angèle Nocente, who was one of the first woodworkers, Michel Fugier and Roger Abondance. They were the true inventors of the Strato. Roger Abondance is one of the people who really perfected the Strato. Angèle invented them. Perhaps I'm being unfair to some people by putting it that way. But Roger Abondance turned them into the skis that all the racers wore. I put the elements we'd brought together into a closet polymer mold, meaning the product came out fully complete. Well, technically speaking. All that was left to do was the finish. And that was it. It was the first one-piece ski to come out in this range. That was the Strato's design. Why this design? Simply because these skis have a single, unbroken edge, while all our competitors at the time worked with shorter pieces that were fragmented or screwed on. Top protection, that's also ABS with everything built in. Built in tip, tip protection, and tail protection as well. So all these elements were placed in a mold and the product came out fully assembled. Michel Fugier is a good example of the internal promotion that was possible within the company. I started working at Rossignol in 1957 as a factory worker. Back then, I lived in a small town, 17 kilometers from Voiron and I came to work by bike. Those were the good times. I spent my earliest days at Rossignol in this workshop, and my workbench was right here. We made 18 pairs of skis a day. We were paid wages of that period, which was around 420 or 430 francs a month. 
We also had the option of making six extra pairs, for which we got bonus pay. Back then, we didn't have time for meetings because we were so busy with our jobs in the workshop. We lived for Rossignol. It was our life. Laurent Boisvive built on Strato's success to transform this small craftsman's company into a world leader in winter sports equipment. At the time of the buyout, in 1956, 8,000 pairs of skis were manufactured each year. 30 years later, 8,000 pairs were produced by the group's worldwide factories every day. I came up with the idea of the ski manufacturer's pool when I saw how many racers were having trouble pursuing their training. With 600 francs a month, over a period of six months, racers decided to stay in the competition. Charles Boson, Adrien de Villa, of course, Jean Voirnet, and many others. Races with extraordinary talent. There's Peria, Marielle Goichel, not to mention her sister Christine, who also had some fine victories. They were incredible in 1964. They won the famous double. Some excellent downhill races. We had a very strong team back then. This modest amount and the bonus they received if they won, I won't even mention how much it was so little by today's standards. It would seem ridiculous. That was enough for them to continue competing, which of course was their passion. When it comes to racers, I've been very lucky, but I made a fundamental choice for the company. Tamba was never a world junior champion, but we didn't give up on him. He was already with us when he was 12, and at 16, 17, 18, he proved to be one of the greatest, and later he became the best. We've never had a champion win two consecutive Olympics. He's an exceptional skier, and he's never left our skis. This is the crystal globe that's awarded each year to the ski manufacturer with the best ranking in the winter. There are 25 manufacturers competing, and for seven consecutive winters, Rossignol has taken home the crystal globe for best overall ranking. In 1996, Rossignol was the best of the best. There was a big party to mark the 40th year of Laurent Boisvive's leadership of the company. He blew out the candles of the enormous cake, surrounded by all the champions who had contributed to the brand's reputation. Laurent was so happy. The ski market, and alpine skiing, since it's the main market, peaked in 1986-87. When you added cross-country skis, it represented more than 11 million pairs sold. In the early 2000s, this market was practically cut in half. In the meantime, telemarks were added, and there was a revival. Then snowboards came on the scene. That meant the market had become smaller and less substantial. That made it much harder for owners, which explains why many companies disappeared during this period. Like many top executives, Laurent Boisvive lived and breathed for this company and didn't plan on leaving. I don't see things ending this way. I feel like things aren't stopping and they never will. It's not true. I'm so involved in this business that everyone I meet can't imagine that it'll all stop tomorrow and neither can I. In 2005, at 78 years old, Laurent Boisvive decided to hand over his company to the American company Quicksilver. The new owners closed the Saint-Étienne de Crosset factory and built their new headquarters in Saint-Jean-de-Moiran. In the tough economic climate, Rossignol almost disappeared. The company was saved by one of its former executive officers, Bruno Cerclay. The first time I worked with Rossignol was between 2002 and 2005. In the summer of 2005, 
The Boisville family sold the group to the American company Quicksilver. I then left the group and when Quicksilver decided to sell Rossignol again in 2008, I came back with some American and Australian financial partners and bought back the group in November 2008. There were two major assets that made me think the company could recover. First were the exceptional brands. Rossignol helps skiing as a sport develop worldwide, with pioneers like Abel Rossignol and later Laurent Boisvive and his friend Émile Allais. Des précurseurs comme Abel Rossignol, mais Laurent Boisvive derrière avec son copain Émile Allais. Donc ça a été vraiment le that was really the growth of skiing, and Rossignol has been making skis for a hundred years. It was going through a rough period, but there's no reason why we couldn't fix things since there's a real expertise in this company. Bruno Cerclet implemented a recovery plan that involved relocating some production from Asia back to France in order to strengthen the Salange factory and promote French know-how. Now that we've decided to invest massively in Salange, I hope we'll be around for many years, for decades. Salange is an exceptional site in terms of ski production, especially since we have the Mont Blanc just above us, and that's inspiring for everyone. At the Albertville Olympics, Rossignol's star was Alberto Tomba. Today, the five-time Olympic champion, Martin Fourcade, is Rossignol's top ambassador and wears the brand with pride. I've won everything on Rossignol's. Like all kids, I had several ski brands when I was little. I've been on Rossignol's for over 15 years now. Our history goes back a long time. I was discovered by Rossignol's junior recruitment service. It's a recruitment system that's introduced young, but it really helps athletes and provides them with the best gear possible. We're so happy to have an athlete like Martin Fourcade. First of all, he's nice and very professional. It's nice to have a good athlete, but it's amazing to have one with whom we can communicate so we have a deeper understanding of his needs, which then allows us to decide on improvements for the equipment. I think the collaboration with Martin Fourcade has enabled us to evolve and put excellent products on the market. Martin Fourcade nous a permis de progresser et de mettre sur le marché des produits de très très haut niveau. We're constantly working on the equipment to make it the best it can be, and we test them every day. Small improvements to new products stack up, and these products and the technology are later brought to the wider public. Although the Rossignol Group's core business remains winter sport equipment, it has now greatly diversified and serves consumers who are drawn to the mountain all year long especially through their new ventures in fields like biking, trail, running and apparel. From the mountains to the city, this is now Rossignol's goal, as seen as their successful sport chic collections. <laughs>